This SUV TV broadcast of Holiday Hoops Given is brought to you by Adidas, Seven Group, Atlanta Hawks, Dribble Bridge, and CBA Sports. We welcome you inside of Holy Innocence Episcopal School as we continue with SUV TV's exclusive coverage 
of Holiday Hoops Giving. Joe Hillsman, Yasir Roseman, and Mark Edwards in our SUV TV courtside seats. It is the Grayson Rams coming in at 5-0 and the Mountain Brook Spartans out of Alabama coming in at 6-0. and Mountain Brook, well, a lot of you know of Trendon Watford, Mark. He's gone, but Colby Jones can hold weight too. I got to see it. I've heard a lot of great things about this kid. Um, I've heard a lot of great things about this team. I heard they play very up-tempo, and they're going to press the whole game. I got to see it to believe it. And I want to see them do that to Grayson. Because Grayson, I want to see them play fast. I critiqued the head coach the other day, told him when they played Milton, I believe they should have played a little bit faster to start the game off. So let's see if he makes any kind of changes or whatever. Y'all see in this matchup, what are you looking forward to seeing between Grayson and Mountain Brook? Well, I know the team from Mountain Brook pretty well so because I was at Alabama the last two years and I recruited Trenton Walker. And one thing I know about Bucky McMillan, he's going to play defense. So I'm excited to see how Grayson reacts to their press because they're going to be up-tempo, pressure all night, different defenses. So I want to see Davion Smith, how he reacts to um, the changing defenses of Mountain Brook. The Grayson Rams, the representative road team, they'll be in the gold uniforms, and their starting lineup will be number two, Caleb Murphy, Murphy a senior at 6'4". Number five, Davion Smith, a senior at 6'2". Number 22, Tadari Lane, a senior at 6'5". Number three, Josh Smith, a senior at 6'3". And number four, Ian Shefflin, a junior at 6'7". Murphy, Smith, Lane, Smith, and Shefflin. For Mountain Brook, it'll be number one, Hope Banaski, a senior, 6'6". Number three, Colby Jones, 6'5". Number 13, Paul Stramanga, at 6 foot and a senior. Number 21, Alex Belt, 6'5", and a senior. And number 22, 6'5", and a senior, Carter Sombero. Mountain Brook has won it. They're moving right to left as you view it. Black top, black bottoms, white numbers, little shade of gold trim. Inside, pump fake on the floor and a foul. So he'll go to the free throw line immediately. Carter Sombero draws the foul. Mountain Brook, 7A out of the state of Alabama, the highest classification. And they have won the highest classification three straight years in a row, going for an unprecedented fourth in a row. They're coming in at 6-0. and The head coach is Bucky McMillan. The Grayson Rams head coach is Joffrey Pierce in his eighth year, 145 victories against 60 losses. That's pretty good. I love the way they came out doing a dribble handoff. That's, that's college-style basketball that a lot of these kids should be learning now. Here they are with their pressure. They'll change defenses all night long. Above the neck to Tanari Lane, who saved it and dropped home the jumper. He cracks the seal. Tanari Lane, his first field goal. But one of the things I'm going to look for, especially with the Mountain Brook Press, this is Grayson's fourth game in six days and their second set of back-to-backs this week. So it'll be interesting to see how the legs are. But one thing for Grayson and Coach Joffrey Pierce, they do have depth, especially in the front court. Colby Jones in possession of the basketball and spins it over to Stramanga. Stramanga has it with six on the shot clock. Steps in, ball was deflected, it recovers it. Outside, Jones, right wing three. It caroms off. Smith, one of the better rebounding guards, headed to Mississippi State in transition. Spins it to Murphy. Caleb pulls the three, bottom. Caleb Murphy cracks the seal on a deep three ball. I'd like to see that Davion has accepted the role of being, you know, a distributor, not just a scorer. He's been a scorer his whole life. I like the fact that he's distributing the ball right now, making plays for us. Inside layup, good. Kobe Jones, his first field goal. Jones holding offers from Alabama, Georgia, Clemson, and UAB right now. Murphy, right wing three this time, online, but it's an air ball. Out of bounds, and possession will go to Mountain Brook quickly up off the bench. Peyton Haley, a 6'10 senior, will check in for the very first time. Well, and I, taking a seat will be Alex Belt. I don't understand that last play. He had a layup under the basket and threw it out for a three to a guy that's not a great three-point shooter. I'm, not, I'm curious about that play. Stramaglia is into the full court right on the Holiday Hoops giving logo as they set up the offense. Jones with his back to the basket, knocked away by Smith. Smith with good hands defensively. Here comes Murphy in transition. Murphy sidestep, goes off the window, counted, and the foul. Caleb Murphy, a score, and one more. Nice little Euro step, real athletic move. That's what he needs to do, attack the basket, you know, make the game easier. Caleb Murphy going to South Florida. Did not play in the second game of their back-to-back -back earlier this week because of a hand injury, but has played since, completes the three-point play. 
And this week alone, coming in at 12 and a half points per game just this week after a 17-point effort last night over the victory over Memphis East. Wheel action above the perimeter. Here's Colby Jones, worked on defensively by Josh Smith. Jones forces and scores. I like him, fundamentally sound. Is this what you've been watching for the past few years? Yeah, I watched him the past couple years. He actually um, signed with uh, Xavier. So he's going to Xavier with Juan Odom, mm. um, really good player. Really is coming to his own this year. Actually, on the, um, in the Nike EYBL, he had a big time, big time tournament. I think he averaged about 20, 22 points a game in the EYBL okay. this year. So um, he's a player. He's and speaking player. of Xavier, Jonas Hayes in the building. Xavier with a victory earlier today. Operation on offense now for the Spartans of Mountain Brook. Jones turns. No, board by Shefflin. Shefflin, he walked with the basketball. He's holding his knee. Hopefully he didn't land on it. Kind of funny. Tajay Kelly now up off of the Grayson bench, and he'll come in for Shefflin with 5.24 to go. So a little more than two and a half minutes gone by in this opening frame. Grayson with some of that big depth that you talked about, Coach. Inside Jones and one Colby Jones. So Jones getting it going very early. He has six points in the early going and will go to the free throw line for the very first time. Edward Reed, a six-foot senior, will check in. You guys talked about up and down, and we've seen the pressure from Mountain View, or Mountain Brook, or excuse me, 78 and a half points per game. They're averaging for their first six. But on the flip side, Grayson at 76. So something we'll have to give. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, wonder, I wonder if if, this, if these guys from Alabama can keep up this pace. And based on what Yasir is saying, this is what they do. So this is going to be an interesting game. This will be a fun game, especially with a 30-second shot clock. This should be really entertaining. I've watched them for the last three years. They never run from anybody. They actually play in all the big-time tournaments. And you, you watch them, guys look at them in warm-ups, and they think they can beat them. And they just come out and they beat everybody. Tonari Lane with a second chance opportunity. I think Yazir is dipping into my notes because that's one of the one things you have to understand about this Mountain Brook squad. They have played all over everywhere the last few years. That shot is blocked and denied and out of bounds. The other thing, though, talking about them offensively, defensively, both of them are giving up exactly 54.5 points per game this season. Exactly both of them. So if you're splitting hairs, there's a two-point difference, basically, because offensively, Mountain Brook scores two more points than Grayson, offensively. Some, so. Like you said, some's going to have to give. Some's going to have to give tonight. Um, I think from a talent perspective, I think Grayson on paper is probably more talented. But uh, this Mountain Brook team, I'm telling you, they won't run from anybody. They're running their sets crisp. They're running through their, they're running through their movements. I like, the, I like what they're doing. Fundamentally sound, jump hop, up fake. Yeah, that's basketball right there. Colby Jones off to a stellar start, knocked out of bounds. It's 11 to 10 Mountain Brook, and Coach Bucky McMillan is just shuffling them in and out. In comes Colby Blackwell, a junior now at 5'10". Joffrey Pierce stands and looks at his bench, then puts his arm cross inbound to Davon Smith. Davon around the Kelly screen, pulls up from 18 feet. Front iron, did not get the roll. Rebound, hit the floor. They fight for it amongst teammates, it is. And the two teammates are going to come away with it, but it's deflected. And now running out with it is Haley. Haley on the break. Peyton Haley goes up. The shot was denied by Kelly. Rebound up underneath by Jones, put it back up. No, they fight for it again. Scrappiness at the moment from both sides. Murphy now holds as Grayson sets with 20 on the clock. Into the corner, lane, set fire, three on the way. Tried to bank it, no. Rebound, Jones. He recovers it in the backcourt with exactly four minutes gone in his opening frame, oh, plus one. Good. Entirely too many jump shots by the Grayson Rams. Entirely too many jump shots. This is a smaller team. Let's try to take it to the basket, let them take some charge and see what happens. Davon Smith in transition. Well, Mark, that's one thing I think you're making an excellent point, but this is their fourth game in six days. I'm going to worry about the legs. I'm not. They're young. No, on the jumper. It's going to be shot short. I these understand. Kids, these kids oh, shoot man. set shots nowadays. They'll be all right. I understand what you're saying. Bro, they're everybody young, don't but. shoot like y'all see you shoot back in the day, jumping 30, 40 inches off the ground, <laughs> and, you know, elevating. That was a long time ago. <laughs> a 
very, very long time ago. Blocking foul called on Tajay Kelly. That'll be his first, the team's third. And at the free throw line will be Colby Jones. Jones already filling up the stat book. He has nine points in the contest. And massive substitutions are coming again for Mountain Brook. The way he plays, he can easily get 40 points in this game because he's not really using a lot of energy. He's real efficient with his movements. He's using shot fakes. He's running hard on his curls and, and his drives to the basket. I like the way he plays. Real simple. He's the kind of kid that would be real successful at the college level because he's making the game simple. He's not trying to overuse athleticism, which is something that a lot of kids do now. Two of two from the free throw line. His third one coming up. We're in an even ball game, 12 all, with 3.31 to go. Free throw, good from Colby Jones. Yeah, I like them. They get a lot of substitutions in there. Well, no, he. Well, what a lot of people don't understand about Mountain Brook basketball, all these guys go. They go to Bucky's camp from age five on up. So all these guys are used to playing together, and they know the system. So the system is in. Yeah. Once you get to the school, the system is in, and you know, obviously. You have a player that may transfer in once. Uh, I think Kobe was a transfer in his 10th grade year. And I'm telling you, man, th there'll be a tough out. Murphy's jumper is no good. Rebound brought down by Carter Sabera. Stramaglia now running the offense and gives it over to Bashniki. In the corner, set fire three by Belt. No good. Rebound tipped out of bounds. And it will be a foul called on Mountain Brook. And it'll be on Stramaglia. His first, team second. 2.55 to go, 13 to 12. So it's a nip and tuck affair so far. One point difference. Mountain Brook in black as you view it. Grayson, they are in goal. And Davon Smith now checks out of the ball game. So into the contest is Kaylin, Caden McArthur, number one for the Grayson Rams. McArthur breaks the press, spins it in the corner. Smith now back to McArthur. Everything around the perimeter at the moment. Tanari Lane now to McArthur. Lane around the screen. The three is no good. Board is swallowed up by Sabera. Outletting now to Basniki. Grayson's got to get some better movement. They need to get the ball to the free throw line. They got to do something. They got to get some paint touches, Coach. No doubt. They do need to get in the paint, try to get a couple fouls, get to the free throw line. I think they're playing right in the Mountain Brook's hands by shooting jumpers. Yeah. Take it to the basket, get to the foul line, get into the bonus. You know, get some points that way, and then it maybe it'll open up some of your three-point shots. Paint touches is the, is, the, is the new thing. It's not the new thing. It's just the smartest thing you can do to uh, make a defense make mistakes, and that's what they're doing almost every time down the court. Edward Reed going to the free throw line to try and complete the three-point play to six-foot senior. So, again, substitutions for Mountain Brook, and you'll see that all night. Ian Shefflin will come in. Kelly will go out for the Grayson Rams. Mark, you've watched this Grayson team a lot. Well, what are they really, really good at? I've watched them a couple times. I mean, I know who the stars are, but what is their, um, what do they do? Their best what is their, attribute what is their, to their, me? I, what is their identity? Fast-paced basketball. And right now, Steel. Their, their defense should initiate their offense, and they're not doing that right now. Okay. And that's what I talked to the coach about in the last game they played against Milton. They should have let the, de the defense dictate their offense, and that's what they're not doing right now. So... And, you know, this team right here, that's exactly what they're doing. They're picking you up. They're pushing you. They're touching you. Right now, they're laid back. Look at all the lanes, the driving lanes. Reed drove and missed, and a foul is called on the attack. No fear right now from the Spartans. As a coach, one of the things I always talk to my players about is if we're attacking the basket and they're not taking charges, we're going to keep doing that until they figure it out. And most times, teams won't figure it out because that's a culture thing as well. A team that takes charges, everybody takes charges. They get points in practice and, and overall as a player for taking charges. If these guys at Grayson are not going to take these charges, they're going to get blown out this gym. Peyton Haley at the free throw line and makes both free throws. Looks like Mountain Brook here is in a 2-2-1 press. 
It is a 2-2-1, and they continue to shuffle them in and out. Davon Smith, meanwhile, for Grayson, has walked back up to the scorer's table. Murphy breaks it and gives it to MacArthur. Another thing their pressure does is shorten the shot clock. So now, with the shot clock being in play, the shot clock comes into play because these guys are having the pressure. They're having to handle the pressure, then get into their offense when they cross half court, and they're getting across the half court with a short shot clock, which causes them to shoot maybe some uncontested jump shots. But then that's called playing basketball, which is why I like that the shot clock is in effect for holiday hoops giving. Keonis Cortman also into the contest. Josh Smith at the free throw line on the drive. We just talked about that, and he makes the first one. Free throw shooting may be very key in this basketball game, especially coming down the stretch. And it seems like everybody from Mountain Brook wears goggles, or at least <laughs> five of them. Intense, Coach. Must have a sponsor with the optic company. Or if, I, if they don't, I just probably helped them get one. Iron City can help him out a lot. Free throw is good from Josh Smith, so he made both of them. 18 to 14 right now. Grayson with the lead. Check it. Mountain Brook with the lead. Mountain Brook, the representative road team. Haley dumps it off. This is the kind off. of defense Grayson needs to stay in the entire game. Put some pressure on them, ice them on the wings. Clock under 10, feeding it in that short corner. Now here comes Belt. Belt pulls long, no good. It didn't hit the rim. That's going to be a shot clock violation. Good defense from the Grayson Rams. And, Mark, you and I talk about it a lot, but this is why you like the shot clock, too. It rewards good defensive efforts. Yes, and the transition from high school to JUCO to D1 basketball to the, next to the NBA is quick decision-making. You know, and positive movements, being efficient, being proficient. See, that's what's going to win them the game if they attack them. Ian Shefflin scores in transition off the Davon Smith assist. Kobe Jones, 14 points, five boards a year ago on the state title run. Inside, Jones leans. It hit the lip of the rim. No, they tip, fight for it, and Cortman had it, and it was taken back away by Jones. On the attack, Jones, Smith tried to block it. It fell out. Shefflin with the board, and he's fouled. And Alex Belt is upset that the foul was called on him, and he had a show of emotion. Based on their stats, both these teams will be considered bullies. Score a lot of points and give up a little bit amount of points. So let's see which bully gets hit in the mouth first. Because usually that's, that's the one that quits. 21 and 6, 10 seconds to go. A high-octane first quarter at the moment. And you always want to get a 20-point quarter. And right now, Grayson has 16 and Mountain Brook has 18. Cortman triggers it in. Davon Smith picked up defensively full court by Haley. Help was coming from Blackman. Lead pass up to Cortman. He tried to save it and saved it in the section row one. I'm not a fan of point guards picking up their dribbles in the backcourt against Who the press. Is? Who is a fan? You don't pick up your dribble. Keep it in the middle. Tough possession right there for Dave. He probably should have kept the dribble alive and tried to find a guy in the middle or just find out where they were rotating from and get hit the open guy. A lot of times guys pick their dribble up too early. And here we back-to-back -back turnovers. Five seconds to go. Another quick substitution. Alex Britt, a well-conditioned Mountain Brook team. Stramaglia will come out. Stramaglia coming back from a knee injury last season. No braces that he's wearing on either one, so hopefully he's all well. Davon to MacArthur to beat the horn top side. No. We're at the end of the first quarter, an entertaining and exciting first quarter. It sees the Mountain Brook Spartans with an 18-16 lead over the Grayson Rams. You're watching SUV TV's exclusive coverage on Holiday Hoops Giving. Your score, 16. This SUV TV broadcast of Holiday Hoops Giving is brought to you by Adidas, Seven Group, Atlanta Hawks, 
Dribble Bridge, and CBA Sports. We welcome you back inside of Holy Innocence Episcopal School in Atlanta, Georgia. In our SUV TV court sign seat, Joel Hillsman, Yashir Roseman, and Mark Edwards, holiday hoops giving continues. First quarter thoughts, Yashir. Well, I thought both teams played pretty well. A couple turnovers there late in the half. Uh, but I thought it was a pretty clean game. Both guys, both teams are trying to fill each other out. There you have a three-pointer here. So we'll see how this game progresses. Keonis Cortman in the corner with the triple. With the shot clock at 27. 7.37 to go in this second quarter. Nineteen eighteen. As play resumes, 25 on the 30. Between the rings now is Reed. Here's Jones. Jones, a quick move, dumped it off. Great Layup is off. They fight for it. Jones on the board, goes up, puts it off the window and scores. He has 13 in the contest, Colby Jones. There it is. Mountain Brook in Birmingham. In the Birmingham area, Iron City. Gobi Jones' father played at Vestavia Hills and also stayed there in Birmingham and played at UAB on the collegiate level. 20 to 19, Mountain Brook with the lead. Mountain Brook, the representative road team, they're in the black. Grayson in the gold, the representative home team. MacArthur into the forecourt. MacArthur, Shefflin, Davon Smith, Josh Smith, and Keonis. Cortman, the five on the floor for the Grayson Rams at the moment. In the corner, Cortman, a right corner three. It is no good. Rebound comes and falls into the lap of Sobera, who gives it over to Colby Jones. Jones has got Belk in the corner. He goes and floats it up. An offensive foul on Colby Jones. So it is Colby Jones, uh, Alex Belt, Edward Reed, Carter Sobero. Oh, he hurt himself. Looked like he hurt his knee there. Hope he's okay. He's the key. He's the key to this team. He's been around a long time. He started as a ninth grader. Who was that? I didn't even see that. Stoglion. Is it Stoglion? Stoglion? Oh, it's, um, Paul Stramaglia. Stramaglia. Yeah, Stramaglia is down back in the tunnel. Peyton Haley checked in for him, the 5'10 senior. Grace has taken entirely too long to get into their offense. They're not starting their offense until they get to about the 22nd mark. 13 on the shot clock. Davon now has it out on the hoops giving logo. Shot clock is at 7. Looks like Mountain Bull is going to pack the paint here. Try to stop penetration from Davon. Smith pulls a three bottom. Get that out the bottom of the net. A three ball from Davon Smith. 22 to 20 steal. Smith on the break. A beautiful move. Davon Smith breaking out the moves and a fast break lay. And he gives the Grayson Rams a four point lead. Two minutes gone in the second quarter. Reed, they spin it in the corner. Haley pump fake, escape dribble, not there. Reed has it now to Belk. Belk whips it over to Jones. Jones now picked up by Smith, who's purposely trying to make him go left. Sobero has it. Turns, faces, now gives it off to Reed. 
Haley lost his footing. Now Jones has to fire it up. No, board by Shefflin. Long outlet may be too far. Smith recovered it. Smith across, attacks over to Cortman. Cortman spins and gives it back to Davon, and they'll be easy with it as the shot clock is not running. My man is falling asleep down on the baseline. You've got to pay attention when you've got that trigger in your hand. 24 to 20 with 5.12 to go. We want the shot clock to stay. Stay awoke. <laughs> exactly. I agree. 25-25. Twenty-five seconds on him. Somebody go get him a Red Bull. Some no dos. How Some. long has he been here today? <laughs> he looks sleep. Yeah, he Stop, like start, reset. It's that easy. And it should just be one button. Spin in the corner. Great Cortman pass. three ball Great bottoms. Keonis Cortman. That's his shot. Good find. Cortman with a three, he cracked one from the left corner, and now he bangs one from the right corner. And now all of a sudden, let's see, on substitutions now, Murphy and Lane back in. So it'll be Davon Smith, Shefflin, Murphy, Lane, and Cortman on the floor for the Rams. Haley, Jones, Bashekny, Swagger didn't even see him check in the ball game, and Edward Reed. So 4:59 to go, 27 to 20. Just explaining to the officials, uh, the official is explaining to the referees about something. So we've got it squared away. Good job by the official crew. And now was there a timeout call? Who called a timeout? No timeout. Okay. Oh. That's correct. Both uh, Mountain Brook is playing so fast, they're having to check the book two and three times. Nothing wrong with it. In the Jones. Jones turns, left it short. Shefflin on the glass, outletting now. Here comes Murphy in transition. Caleb Murphy downhill. Murphy to the hoop, flying and scoring. And one, Caleb Murphy. Good job attacking the basket. I'm glad he didn't settle for the pull-up jump shot. Um, kid from Mountain Brook was too far under the basket for that to be a charge. Really good move by Caleb Murphy. Real athletic move. So Murphy, who's going to South Florida, as you take a look at the SGV TV instant replay, will now be going to the free throw line. Murphy completes the three-point play. Murphy now with nine in the contest, and it is a 10-point Grayson Ram lead with 4.38 to go. Mountain Brook needs to manufacture some points here. Need to get a good possession. Quickly. Jones gives it back out. 424 remaining. Second quarter. Jones spins into the corner. Great Set man. fire. Three on the way by Reed. It is no good. Rebound to Cortman. Cortman had it knocked away from Jones. Steal by Davon Smith. He's got Lane with him. They may play pitch and catch. They do. The pass was low. Recovered by... Murphy, who scores. Everybody was running the break, and all of a sudden, Grayson has a 12-point lead. Four minutes gone, second quarter, and there comes the Mountain Brook timeout. It'll be a 30-second timeout. They had to stop the bleeding, gentlemen. Um, what Grayson's figured out is that Mountain Brook is not really prolific at knocking down those three-pointers. So they're kind of packing the lane in a little bit, not letting them use that weave, that dribble handoff too much to get paint touches, and they're making them shoot jumpers. No, Mountain Brook can't get a bucket. They can't score right now. They're having a hard time scoring. They're, they're getting some good looks. They've missed about three or four chippy layups there and probably would be in the game. But 
Grayson has done a good job of getting some points in transition, getting a couple steals. Kind of the way you want him to play, Mark. Definitely, definitely. I mean, the, the key to the game, the whole – the whole basis of basketball is to put the brown thing in the round thing. That's what you got to do. Put the brown thing in the round thing. And right now, Mountain Brook cannot do that. So right now, 358, Mark, one of my favorite stats right now. Six assists on 12 made field goals for the Grayson Ram. They're shooting it at a 60% clip right now. That's amazing. That's amazing right there. Mountain I mean, you got two, two high-level point guards on your squad. You should have those kind of stats. And Mountain Brook on the other side at 33%, just to v validate your point as far as they're not knocking down shots. Jones, 14-footer. He left it short. Rebound hit the floor. They battle for it. Jones gets it to Reed. Back out. Set fire. A three by Bashnitsky. An air ball. Who opened the door? Nobody. It's just a bad shot miss. 334 to go. Grayson is keeping... One person in the middle of the paint the entire time, waiting for them to drive to the basket. So they're really cutting off their driving lanes. So they're making Mountain Brook shoot those threes. And Mark, they're having a tough time making them. 15 players on the Mountain Brook roster, 13 of them have seen the action. I mean, it's just up and down. A lot of substitutions, Coach. I mean, like a drive through <laughs> This is old school UNLV Arkansas Razorback basketball right here. That's what they're trying to do. But right now, the run has them in trouble. I keep warning everybody about this Georgia basketball. They're building something special out here. Inside, no tip, no, and a foul going up on the shot. Foul called on Ian Shefflin. Shefflin with his palms to the sky in confusion. I think it was a goal team, Coach. They do. Yeah. Give him the two. The yep. Mm. Shook the basket. Now, I don't know who they gave the basket to. We'll find out, though. Ten-point ball game. Murphy across the timeline, and now the Grayson Rams will set it up. Smith to Murphy. And the Josh Smith, who recovers it in the corner, knocked, around, knocked out of bounds off of Mountain Brook, but I think it went off of Josh Smith's toe. Grayson, once again, is taking too long to get their offense started. Your offense should be started before the point guard gets to half court. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Smith to the top to Murphy. Murphy, a bevy of moves. Pull up from the elbow. It is no good. The board is swallowed up by Alex Belt. Long outlet passes almost knocked away. Good free safety skills from Caleb Murphy. Right there, Grayson played right into Mountain Brook's hand and taking that shot. Um, I think they could have got a, a better possession there. Paint touches. Drive, kick, drive, finish. Right now, Mountain Brook is the well-conditioned team, but they are not putting it in the bucket. And a lot of distractive basketball, I like to call it. Traveling violation, Kobe Jones. They're doing a lot, subbing a lot, talking a lot. Look at this. And we're at the racetrack. <laughs> In and out. I think there's pros and cons to that. But then if that's your system, you're used to that as far as comfortableness and getting in the flow of the game. I think it makes players uh, become a little bit more efficient. They know they got one or two minutes to give it their all on defense, make some smart plays. And, you know, you keep your mainstay players in for a little bit longer, but, you know, it's about making quick decisions. Turnover. Max Swoger comes away with the steal. Now here's Kobe Jones. Jones on the attack. Up. And a foul call. So Jones will go to the free throw line. A 16 foul on Grayson, but this was a shooting foul. I'm not a fan of those kind of finishes in the paint, Coach. What do you think as far as college? He's not going to be able to do that. He's going to have to come to a jump stop and elevate and really, you know, be balanced with that shot. I always try to preach to kids, play off two feet. Play off two feet so you can have some balance going in there and maybe you have a chance to get an and one. When you're playing off one foot, it's kind of hard. I mean, I think a lot of times these guys look at the NBA and see those guys do that, but those guys are, you know, they're superstars. They're Some of the greatest hit, athletes hit. in the world. They're exceptional. Yeah. So until you get to that level, until you master that, I think you should come to a two-foot stop and see if you can, because it gives you other opportunities to either make a pass or make a shot. And they practice it. Like, once you see it in a game, that's not the first time they've done that. 
No they, doubt. They practice that at 12 o'clock during practice while you are somewhere at study hall. There is a difference. <laughs> there yeah. is a difference. Yeah. Jones going through his free throw routine again. He's having an effective night, though, with 14 points. 15 points. And he's perfect from the free throw line on the day at 5 of 5. Here we go with some more substitutions, Coach. Oh, yeah, I'm used to it now. If, if, they, if, if we had ice in here, I would think it was hockey. Although they're not coming on the lane, line, lanes, line change variety, but they are coming fast and frequent. The play-by-play -play will have substitution every 30 seconds. Three, Smith, no. Great rebound. Great rebound. Tonari Lane on the offensive glass with the second chance opportunity and stick back. He has six points in the contest. Tanari Lane going to Winthrop in the Big South in Rocky Hill, South Carolina. Foul offensively on the screen called on Carter Severo. Coach Bucky Millingham now, McMillan. I think he was a little frustrated with that one, and he said it's going to be a long game if they call that one. Court trap here, one three one, long pass. Ninety seconds. Murphy has it to Smith. Now they're racing a trap at him. Murphy drives left of the lane in the corner. Offensive foul called on Caleb Murphy. Jump stop, coach. And that we were just talking about playoff two feet. Playoff two feet. Got to play off two feet. Anytime you leave the air to pass, nothing good happens. Learned that a long time ago, coach. I'm sure. Nothing. Nothing. Actually made the right play. He just didn't play off two feet. Mm -hmm. Got in there and charged. And that's an excellent example of what you mean by playing off of two feet because if he does, that could be a knockdown three. And then when you play off two feet, you get a good crisp pass. It hit him in his shooting pocket. I don't think a lot of people can, can, can uh, appreciate um, the knowledge, you know, my brother Yasir is uh, is passing out. How many years of college coach do you have, Yasir? 16. 16. 16 years. And you're relatively young. So, <laughs> so you say. That's what everybody <laughs> think I am. I'm not that young. <laughs> Jones scored. Here comes Davon Smith back this way. Up to Ian Shefflin. Count it. Good and pass. the foul. Ian Shefflin with the hoop. Way to play under control. I think you got a little bit too deep in the paint on that pass, but... He completed the play. Good job. Look at Davon. Head up. A little tricky dribble, but he knew that Ian, and one thing I like about this, reward the big man when he runs the floor. And I'm so happy he did not pump fake on that. Went straight up. Yes. Or put down an unnecessary dribble. Completes the three-point play. Grayson's lead is 11 at 37 of 26. Jones racing into the forecourt. We are under a minute, under 50 seconds now exactly. Jones between the rings. Spins it to the left. I would love to see the analytics on how many passes Mountain Brook has at the end of the game. Because mm. they are moving that basketball, especially around the horn. And that's their thing. They're trying to let you make mistakes on defense. That's what a great offense does. They make a lot of quick decisions, and they allow you to make the mistake. They'll get a backdoor cut. They get a driving kick. Or they'll get a pump fake. And the up and under. And, and, of course, that is their style. But, you know, some possessions are longer than others. Three-second difference in game and shot clock. Davon Smith makes the move. Now spins it over to Murphy. Back to Lane. Lane to Shefflin. Shefflin, the double-team came. Kicks it to the corner to Davon to beat the shot clock bottom. An absolute outstanding offensive possession to end the first half for the Grayson Rams. They take a 40 to 26 lead into the half over the Mountain Brook Spartans out of Alabama. You're watching SGV TV's continuing exclusive coverage of Holiday Hoops Giving.
SUV TV broadcast of Holiday Hoops Given is brought to you by Adidas, Seven Group, Atlanta Hawks, Dribble Bridge, and CBA Sports.
we welcome you back inside of Holy Innocence Episcopal School, school as we are at the half. 40 to 26, Grayson on Mountain Brook in our SUV TV courtside seats, Joe Hillsman, Yasir Roseman, and Mark Edwards. And guys, I'm looking at the stat sheet. I'm loving what I'm looking at. Eight assists on 15 main field goals for Grayson. Uh, they are losing the rebounding battle 13 to 9, but overall still shooting it at a 60% clip. Yeah, the thing that jumps out to me, Coach, is uh, Mountain Brook's turnover. They have 11 turnovers to two assists. I don't know if you can win many ball games with only two assists. Yeah, wow. And they've only got two. Yeah, two. Ooh, that's bad. No block shots. It just doesn't look good for them right now. The one thing that, though, is keeping them, I guess, close is the foul shooting there. 10 of 10 from the line, but Grayson is 5 of 5 as well. And lead change 9, but all of that was early as Grayson has opened it up. Mountain Brook will be moving left to right as you view it. They are in the black with the gold or yellow numbers and green trim, and Mr. Uniform Police is in effect. Grayson, they're in the gold, gold tops, and gold bottoms, green numbers, black trim. Leading scorer in that first half for Mountain Brook, Kobe Jones, 17 points to go with five boards. For Grayson, Caleb Murphy, 11, and Davon Smith, 10. He had eight in that second quarter, did Smith. Kobe Jones now has it on the block, worked on by Murphy. Sobera now in here is Haley. Sobera pump faked on Shefflin, comes across the lane, flipped it up with the right hand, and it went in and scored. Carter Sobero, his second field goal. Up ahead, Josh Smith. No, offensive foul on Josh Smith, the 6'3 senior. Got to play off two feet. That's a jump stop and a small little jump hook or a little jump shot. Forty to twenty-eight, a twelve-point advantage. Go ahead, yes, sir. Bucky looked like he's checking the score. He is trying to make sure they get those two points. But points have been hard to come by, so he wants his points on the board for sure. Indeed, Jones now to Sabero, Sabero to Haley. Weave action, and now here's Jones and a whistle. Foul on Josh Smith. Like you guys said, Mount Brook really moves the ball. If they can put the ball in the basket and get some out of some of this movement, they'll be pretty good. But they haven't made a three tonight and, you know, a low number of assists. That's, that's probably the reason why, because they can't make a shot. Oh, a five from beyond the arc. The key for them is going to be paint touches. How many times they can get the ball to touch the paint, make the defense move. 14 points in the paint in that first half. 14 of their 26. There it is. Three ball. Bang. Kobe Jones on cue every with a right wing three. Every time they can get the ball to touch the paint, the defense has to make a decisive move. Coach Joffrey Pierce is upset with the officiating. He calls a timeout his first. It'll be a 30-second timeout as you take a look at our SUV TV instant replay. As Kobe caught it in the shooting pocket, good rotation, and stripped the nets. 7-10 to go. The lead is down to nine. Nice footwork leading into that shot. Rhythm, one, two. Nice follow through. That's Great. what we need to see more of. Great job by the pass. Getting in there, playing off two feet. Got in there, jump stop. Yep. Found the guy on time, on target pass. They're letting the ball touch both sides of the court. You know, that's what they're doing. They're swinging that ball and moving quickly. I like their offense. They have to continue to do this to get back in the game. It will be Belk, Banishki, Sobero, Haley, and Jones, the five on the floor for Mountain Brook. Caleb Murphy breaks the press. Murphy spins it to Smith. Josh Smith across the lane, and the pass was stolen. Tried to go back to the corner. Haley with the steal. Up ahead to Belt. Belt goes with a layup. Blew it. No good. Shefflin on the glass and shovels it over to Davon Smith. Great defense right there by Davon Smith. Not getting a foul. Just kind of contesting the layup. Caused the guy to miss the layup, but now they got a good possession here. They need to get a bucket here. They haven't scored in the half yet. A minute and a half gone by and a traveling violation on Ian Shefflin. Yeah, he went a little bit too quick that time. Coach Pierce is saying he was pushed. He wants a little body on it. Nine-point lead, a minute and a half exactly gone by in the third frame. 
Mountain Brook operating offensively again. There's Colby Jones. He's did the heavy lifting for him today. The foul will be on Davon Smith. Third team foul on Grayson in this half. Keep an eye on that because if Mountain Brook can get into the bonus quickly, that's something that would be advantageous to them. It's very much so, Coach, with the shot clock. Now Indeed. That, now that the shot clock comes into play, now you can't just foul. Foul just to foul. You get in, get in there, you get in the early bonus. Now you can sl slow the clock down and maybe you'll be able to come back. That is exactly why the shot clock needs to be in all of high school basketball. Getting a little cleanup action here on the wing. Haley will be in, inbound right in front of our SUV TV position. Gets it in to Sobera. He catches and now gives it to Colby Jones. Jones goes the baseline, flips it, and they spin it all the way around. Escape dribble didn't go anywhere with it, though. Knocked away and a out of bounds. Staying with Mountain Brook. I would like to count the passes on their possession. They look like they're exactly. 10 or 11 passes on each possession. They're making the defense really work. Six oh eight to go. Got sleepy on the shot clock down there. <laughs> Ten seconds. And I'm taking a look down the hall at Paul Stramaglia. And I don't I don't want to say he's not gonna return, but he has his shoes off and he's got ice on that right ankle. Three ball out of the corner. Haley no Shefflin boards. Davon Smith in transition. Pull up from 13. Hill of the rim no. Board ripped down by Holt. And now Jones comes back. There's this 14-foot floater. It's long. Rebound to Murphy. There used to be a point in time with that. Instead of that being a one, instead of that being a one-handed shot, that used to be just a nice little pull-up. Yeah. Timeout has been called by the Grayson Rams again, and Coach Joffrey Pierce has a disgusted look on his face. It is a full timeout, so they have three timeouts remaining, two fulls, and a 30. This timeout brought to you by SUV TV. Watch SUV TV whenever and wherever you want. Streaming live and on demand, the SUV TV app is available on Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, and Android TV. You can also visit the SUV TV.com to watch full game broadcasts, replays, and select original content. The SUV TV. Com. Mountain Brook coming in at 6-0, coming off of a 77-69 victory yesterday over Pebble Brook. And before that, three straight wins at the Spartans Turkey Jam Championship with victories over Greensboro East, Greenville, and Hillcrest. But now, Mark, let's talk about their scheduling. They still have Glendale, Ramsey, and Midori in their next three games coming up. They have Hoover and Spain Park twice. But that's after trips to the Cruel Classic in Miami and the Arby's Classic in Bristol, Tennessee. Yeah, no, they're going to be tired. By the, end of, uh, by the end of December, they'll probably have, what, uh, 17, 18 games already played? That'd be Grayson? Mm. No, that, Mountain, they, Brook. They, Mountain Brook. Mountain Brook, yeah, Mountain Brook. But they're is, used to that schedule, Coach. I'm telling you, if you look back at the past, they, that's just what they do when they win the state championship every year. And that's why I'm accentuating it with them going to the Cruel Classic, which is a very respectable tournament in the Miami area, and then going up to Bristol to Arby's Classic, which I, I, always has competitive, competitive teams. That's a two for Davon Smith. He looks like he has a lot more confidence in his jump shots, which shows me he's been working at it. Back cut, layup, Haley, no, yes. He hit six threes on Monday in a 32-point effort. All of them look the same. The jumper right now is looking the same. So he's been in the lab. No doubt, and you can tell. I mean, he's a guy that, you know, when he, when he gets to the next level, when he goes to Mississippi State, he's going to be forced to make jump shots, and it looks like he's been working on it. it looks like he might be ready to make that transition, Coach. Peyton Haley at the free throw line. He is two of two, but now misses that one, left it front on. Shefflin out, Kelly in for the Grayson Rams. Todd Kelly right there on the right block, number 10. Back iron, free throw, it's on the floor. They fight for it, coming away with it is Kobe Jones. Free throw block out, nothing, nothing is worse than not getting the ball out the free throw. You got the advantage, you should be able to get, get your guy boxed out, it's one on one. 
Down low, flip is good. Almost a goal to in there, but Carter Severo flipped it up. He had six points in the contest. 42-33, and here comes the full court pressure. And a push in the back, and the foul will be called on Holt Bashinski. Bashinski, excuse me, to the Bashinski family. Bashinski now will take a seat, 437 remaining. In the penultimate game of the 2019 Holiday Hoops Giving. Murphy drives, and a traveling violation called on Caleb Murphy. A little too much dribbling right there. Really didn't get anything out of that possession. No movement, just 52 dribbles and then a turnover. If I can give one simple critique of Caleb Murphy is I'd like to see him play more north-south than east-west because he's such an athlete that if he gets by you that first step, there's nothing you can do about it. I think he plays the ball a little bit too much. When he gets to college, they're going to hopefully show him how, how to limit net. Mark Edwards. That was the play? <laughs> hey, we'll take it, though. Sometimes that's the play. Get the ball to your best player. And Put the brown thing in the round thing. There it is. Shot no good. They fight for it. Chase down in the corner. Mountain Brook has it. In the corner trapped is Reed. And a 30-second timeout. So they've used both of their 30s. So three full timeouts remaining for Mountain Brook, who, again, coming off a 31-3 and three season last year, 7A state champs. There are three losses. Let's talk about Alabama for a minute. And it, I know Mark doesn't know the answer, but I'm going to ask him. They lost three games last year. How many games did they lose and to who that were Alabama opponents? None. They lost to Winona. Winona, okay. They did. They lose that game every year over in Winona. And open the season this year. Oh, in Winona. Yes. <laughs> in Winona. So we know we know what that means. Home cooking, brother. It was a home, home cooking. cooking. It was a little home cooking. Well, home cooking. they're 6-0 and already this season, and their first victory over Winona. <laughs> At their house. It was against Winona. Was it in Winona? It was not. It okay. Was in okay. <laughs> so we know what's going to happen when they get to Winona. The other two losses last year, McKeecher, a lot of Minnesota. Jones with the right hand and scores. Colby Jones having himself a night. 24 for Jones in the contest. Tanari Lane recovers, jumper, it didn't roll in. Rebound by Belt, hit the floor. We play soccer with Murphy out of bounds. It'll go to Mountain Brook. Is it me or did he Euro step into the defender that time? He did. <laughs> he did. A pro he hop, did. my fault, pro hop, into the direction the defender went to. He did. That wasn't a good possession for Grayson that time. Yeah. I mean, I think they got a little bit sped up by the press. They got to get better possessions if they want to maintain this lead. Smith out, Corkman in. Lane comes up and guards Beshnicki, who's back into the con back into the contest. To the top side. Stop. Three ball by Belt on the way. It caroms out. Kobe Jones on the glass and puts it back in. You're getting the effort from Kobe Jones, no doubt about it. Two and a half to go, third quarter. Full court press by the Spartans. Cortman lost it. Wow. They bang heads and a foul called on Keonis Cortman. I think this is where Davon needs to go and get the ball and get his team settled down. He needs to be the first guy to get the ball against the press because he's made great decisions tonight against their pressure. I'm going to ask this question, and Yasir, I'm going to hope that you answer it first. What are your feelings on analytics? Mm. Wow. Okay. Because Davon Smith's usage rate is very high, and you're suggesting it go even higher right now with this in-game situation. I always just look at it like this. Get the ball in your best player's hands, and that's who needs to have the ball. I don't know what analytics, you know, I'm not an analytics guy. Um, I think there is a place for analytics in basketball, but I think there's also the game is played on the court, you know, so I know there's numbers, and there's numbers in every, you know, in every situation in the game, but sometimes it just come down to, you know, like this play right here. He has an uncanny knack of getting to the basket and making a play right there. You know, that's, there's no analytics to that. That's just a good player going to make a great play. Mark Edwards, your thoughts on analytics? Well, there's, there's, a, there's a bunch of different points to touch on when we talk about analytics. I see that that's the future of basketball in that it's kind of like the whole money ball concept 
that uh, Major League Baseball put into play when they talk about who are the most valuable players, the players they got on base the most. On base percentage is what matters the most in, in, in Major League Baseball. So with the current state of basketball, what we're trying to do is we're trying to go from saying, let's not take as many mid-range shots. That's a really difficult shot. Let's focus more on threes and on getting to the basket. By getting to the basket, we're getting fouled a lot more, so that doesn't count as a shot, and we're stopping the shot clock. And if you take 10 threes and I take 10 twos, if you make five threes, excuse me, five twos, and I just make three threes, I'm still in the ball game. So they want to speed the game up, number one. They want to make it a better product. They want to make it a more athletic product. Um, and as you, do the, as you do the timing and the numbers and so forth, they're showing that we're scoring more points. And at the end of the day, the team that scores the most points at the end of the game is the winner. So that's what this game is about. So analytics is just trying to make it, it's trying to make it a little bit more efficient. It's not really changing the game because, like uh, Kawhi Leonard said, when you get to the playoffs, if you don't have a mid-range shot, you're not going to win. I like analytics. I don't uh, subscribe to them fully because at the end of the day, it's on the floor. Now, you can hit your five threes. How many shots you going to have to take, though, to make those five threes? My defense is on the other end. So, I, it's, you know, give and take. I'm in the middle of the road, but at the end of the day, it's still played on the floor. And at the end of the day, time and score is going to dictate what we do anyway at the end of the game. So, now you look at the NBA players. You have um, guys who played the five in college who are strictly shooting threes now. They're strictly, there's no, there's no, there's very rarely there's a pick and roll guy. There's only a couple pick and roll guys do in the NBA. You, do you think that's because of analytics though? Um, that's because the game is a lot more athletic. It's a lot longer. Understood. So you're not just rolling to the basket and you're allowed to play zone now in the NBA pretty much. You got three seconds. You got your feet in there for one, two. You got to take your foot out the lane. So I remember Dallas when they beat the, the Cavaliers that time. With, with, they beat Miami. They took advantage of playing zone, and LeBron had to figure out, I got to get a mid-range, I got I to get a post-game, I got to get um, a long-distance three because they zoned him up, and he was getting charges, and it really threw him off. So the game has changed in that regard. Well, now, if you ask certain people, they'll say the Chicago Bulls played zone all the time. Yeah. They even <laughs> trapped you because back then it was illegal defense. Illegal defense. Either you had to be on your side. You had to be, be, within, you had to be within, within arm distance of your man, for, th for three seconds, or you have to double team them. I still think there's a place for the big man in the NBA to score inside the restricted area multiple times. And that's o but that's only if you can stretch the floor and get guys knocking down jump shots. Or if you get a point guard to feed the post. Well, you can't read the feed the post much because they're digging down this zone. Well, guys, I'll tell you this about this analytics. Whatever Bucky's doing with his sub, he's got his team right back in this game. Two-point ball game, 44 to 42. At they wearing them down. They wearing them down. Can Corner he hit that? three. They have the lead. Holt Meshnicki, a three ball, his first field goal. And all of a sudden, 45 to 44, right back at you. Played Dave off Smith. two feet. Played off two feet, and it was a mid-range shot. For you analytics guys out there. But like I said, <laughs> when you get to the to the meat of things, you gotta have that mid-range shot. Jumper by Schnicky, no rebound by Kelly. Yes. I'm with the mid-range. You gotta have it. And that's one thing I'm noticing with Davon, Mark, and you correct me if you have it. On his jumpers tonight, he's getting right to his spot, boom, and elevating. I mean, I think he's part bunny rabbit. You know, he's a John Morant type. <laughs> Half man, half bunny rabbit. So when he gets into that spot and elevates, there's nothing you can do to stop him. There's nothing. All he has to do is take that shot at the top of his jump, and he's going to make that basket more times than other. Six-second differential between game and shot as we close the third quarter. The Grayson Rams in possession with a one-point lead. Cross-court pass. Stop. There's MacArthur. Cade now has it back to Davon Smith. Courtman is sitting over in that corner by himself. They swing the basketball. On the drive, MacArthur left it off for Lane. Good, no, for Taj Kelly. Great pass. Back this way, layup is good from Carter. It's a defensive transition. The hardest thing to teach in basketball is defensive transition. Three, Cortman out of the corner. He got fouled. They didn't call it. A long heave will be coming after the horn, and we go to the fourth quarter. A very good quarter from Mountain Brook. 
as they pulled her within one, 48 to 47. Grayson with the lead, a 21 point third quarter for the Mountain Brook Spartans. Fourth quarter action coming up next right here on A Hoops Giving on SUV TV. This SUV TV broadcast of Holiday Hoops Giving is brought to you by Adidas, Seven Group, Atlanta Hawks, Dribble Bridge, and CBA Sports. We welcome you back into Holy Innocence Episcopal, Episcopal School. Excuse me. We welcome you back into Holy Innocence Episcopal School. Joel Hillsman, Yair Roseman, and Mark Edwards in our SUV TV courtside seats. We begin the fourth quarter. Grayson with a 48 to 47 lead. How did Mountain Brook get back 53 percent shooting in that third quarter? They walked them down. They walked them down. Battling underneath, out of bounds, off of Mountain Brook. It'll be Grayson basketball. Caleb Murphy races to the scorer's table. I think Grayson played right into their hands that quarter. I mean, they didn't, they didn't handle the pressure well. They didn't get any good shots in the uh, half court except for a couple of jump shots by Davon Smith. I think they need to get the ball back moving and make those guys move from side to side and put pressure on their defense by getting some layers and maybe get to the foul line. They need to get some good offensive possessions. This they happen. did not get to the foul line in the third quarter. Excellent point there, Yasir. I don't like still how they five or five. Taj Kelly. I think that kid should be dominating in this game right here. I play two bigs. This team is so small. I stuffed the ball down low. Oh, my God. Play the game inside out. Kobe Jones, by the way, has 27. Wow. Efficient 27, too. Ten yes, 20. 27, 27 points on 20 shots, but he's shooting 50%. I respect the these Mountain Brook kids. They're a part of the floor. They are, they are energetic. They're not talking trash. They're pumping each other up. They believe they can win this game. Mark, this is their DNA. I've watched these guys over the past couple of years, Mark. This is in their DNA. I'm telling you, Bucky McMillan has this program right where it needs to be. I mean, he was he was actually on the list of coaches to maybe get the Alabama job. Wow. So yeah. now Grayson will have Davon Smith inbounding, 19 on the shot clock. It is Davon Smith, Shefflin, Murphy, McArthur, and Cortman, the five on the floor for the Grayson Ram. Built. Haley, Bashniki, Jones, and Sabero. Bashkini. Bashinsky. Excuse me to the Bashinsky family. Right now, Grayson is playing small. I think they're playing right into Mountain Brook's hands right now. They're playing right into Mountain Brook's hands. The officials are discussing something down on that end. We'll get it rectified, whatever it is. 7.36 to go in the contest, 48 to 47. Grayson currently at 5-0 on the season and riding a five-game win streak, playing their fourth game in six days. They'll be off until next Friday. They've got a back-to-back -back coming up next weekend, Friday and Saturday. Inbound to Smith, to Cortman. Corner three on the way. Cortman, bang, bang, bang. All three of them from Keonis Cortman. He has nine in the contest, all of them from beyond the arc. Good now catch to Bashinsky. Bashinsky goes baseline, took contact, and scores. Good recognition. Right Davion Smith with the paint touch and the driving kick. 
Cortman left his feet on a pass, a turnover. Nothing good happens when you leave your feet on a pass. Out of bounds, they lost it. Cortman will go out now after dropping the three. Tanari Lane will check in. Tanari Lane has been quiet today. Six points in the contest to go with a pair of boards and a two dime drops, but he's three of seven from the field. He has been had big, big fourth Travel. quarters and walked out of the gym. A big fourth quarter against Milton on Monday and a bigger fourth quarter against Sandy Creek the next night in the back-to-back. -back. Right now, I think Grayson has too many guys in the front court against this press. Shouldn't take four guys in the front court to break the press. They got to they gotta get this press broke, broken if they want to come out victorious in this game. Bashinsky has it and bounces it over. Belt open, three. He knew it was short. They volleyball it around. Jones got the board, goes up. He couldn't get it to go. Rebound fought for underneath and out of bounds, and it will go to the Grayson Round. Kobe Jones, you're taking a look at him, 27 points on the night. Probably wish he had that one back right there, Coach. He was wide open, uncontested layup. Inbound, foul called on Reed. Reed, the six-foot senior, hit with the hold, and that is their fourth team foul. Grayson has six team fouls, so on their next foul, Mountain Brook will be shooting free throws the remainder of the day. A minute gone by, fourth quarter. Smith in the backcourt. Split the D over the lane, a three on the way. No good. Board tipped. Lane saves it in the corner. Out to the top to Davon Smith. Murphy kicks it over to Josh Smith. Three, no. Murphy, offensive glass again, another opportunity. Took contact, no. Up, counted, and the foul, Caleb Murphy. Oh, they called it before the shot. Mm, mm, I don't know mm. about that call that, right that, yeah, there. Yeah, that doesn't make that, that, much sense. That should have been an and one. That should have been the foul right there. Nope. So if you're, it's just, that's, that's an and one. Woo, okay. Looks like that was in the act of shooting. Yeah. Murphy, no good on the first free throw. Yeah, the Wilson ball don't lie. That one does, though. <laughs> Missed, mm. missed them both. Mm. How big would that be? Note that at the 624 mark. The athleticism of Murphy who's going to South Florida. Is, you can see it on display. Reed races through. Open three. Bashinsky. No. Board by Shefflin. Gives it up ahead to Davon Smith. Murphy wanted the alley. Davon floats it home on the break. Great play. Great play. Played off two feet. Good job in transition. 18 for Davon Smith. Holding it now at the elbow. Jones turns, jumper, hill of the rim, rebound to Davon Smith again. Davon pushing it in the middle on the break. Davon stop, floats it again from 12. No, Shefflin, yes, on the follow, and one. Ian Shefflin with his seventh point. He's had an up and down ball game, but still showing some form of consistency. He has seven points, give him eight boards now, and he's going to the free throw line for his eighth point, nearing a double-double. This is how Grace is going to win this game. Attacking the basket, getting paint touches, getting the ball to their bigs, finishing at the rim. Simple plays. Shefflin, eight points and eight boards in the contest to go with a pair of dime drops. Backcourt. On Mountain Brook, 56-49, seven-point advantage now for the Grayson Rams with 5.25 to go. Substitutions belk into the contest for Mountain Brook. Grayson coach taking a page out of uh, Juwan Howard at uh, Maui, hey, mopping man. up the sweat. Big up to Juwan Howard, man. That's a beautiful thing, man. That is a beautiful thing. He did a great job. He's doing a great job with that Michigan team. They'll probably be in the top five. I think there's a lot of people surprised, but quite frankly, I am not. Hey, man, he's been around. He's been around. He has some passion for that place. He, he graduated from um, Michigan, so 
That's most, underspoken. That's that's not really talked about a lot. He left after three years and still continued to take classes online and graduated. And everything that has gone on with that basketball team, but the wealth of basketball knowledge, they are loving him in the mitten at the moment. It's a positive thing to think about, especially after maybe knee. I don't know, because can he coach the football team? Uh, Yeah, he needs they need help. I, they're, I don't think they're ever going to beat Ohio State again. Did they lose to Ohio State again today? Did they? Yeah. Yeah, they got smashed. It was ridiculous. I thought Justin Fields got hurt. He did and yeah. came back in oh. and threw some more touchdowns. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh, 56 wow. points they hung up. That score, Michigan and Ohio, the score looked like this. Ohio State 56, Michigan 27. Oh, and it wow. was not that close. Caleb Murphy has missed three straight free throws. He's going to have to capitalize on some of these free throws if he's going to get to the line. Just knock that one in good there. 57 to 49, the lead now has ballooned out to eight. Three minutes gone by in this third quarter. Excuse me, in this fourth quarter. Jones to Belk to Haley underneath. Good ball movement. The layup is in and good by Carter Sabero. Sabero, 14 points all of a sudden. Now, during that run, he had eight points in that third quarter. Oh, you Caleb Murphy. That, Just show out, why don't you? That time the Euro step worked. I think sometimes the Euro is overused. But that time, Haley it was good use. I think it's one of the things that we talked about earlier with NBA. You know, you start seeing it a lot. Like that's a movement you have to really work you on. It's a it, yeah. very athletic move. Torque. The it torque is. that you have to use. it. It's two steps, but you're going one step in one direction and one in another. Corner, three, no, board to Smith, Josh Smith, and a foul coming from behind. And now we'll have free throws the remainder of the day, 424 to go in this fourth quarter. One and one time now, so it'll be Josh Smith going to the free throw line. Smith on the day is two of two from the free throw line. Those are his only two points. Got to capitalize on these free throws when you get in the bonus. It's the reason why they are free. They're called free throws. No good. Left it short. Put the brown thing in the round thing. It's a big possession here for Mount Brook, fellas. They need to get a bucket here. On the hesitation, floated. Jones, no. Smith, one of the better rebounding guards in all of America, gets that board. And now comes across the timeline, gets it over to Smith. Smith hesitates into the corner to Murphy. Under four minutes. Oh. Jumper, three, Murphy short. Board hit the floor, but Bashinsky came away with it. Kobe Jones surveying. Jones stuck on 27, has not scored in this fourth quarter. Haley's three is no good. Rebound by Schwerger, put up no. Rebound ripped off by Shefflin. So Barra tried to tip that thing in awkwardly. Eight-point ball game, under three and a half to go. You could kind of feel like Grayson, a possession or two away from kind of putting it away. Wow. Let's get a hoop here. Turn, foul. On the floor, Shefflin will go to the free throw line. That's good, good job by Davon. They Last two possessions, they had. I think they shot a three-pointer. So he comes, comes down, calls a play, gets the ball inside, and they get a foul. Great point guard recognition. You always want your point guard to be an extension of the coach on the floor, and I think he did a good job right there understanding time and score. 314 remaining. Pebblebrook and Burkmar coming up next in the final game of the sixth Holiday Hoops Giving. I'm honored to have called all six. All my Spartan fans make some really? noise. This was the lightest load this year, but I've called all six holiday hoops giving. Are we going to have a lane violation? No. One and one. I don't understand now. Mr. PA announcer asking for noise on free throws. As we are, are we at the Entertainment League, Mark Edwards? Uh, yeah, no. <laughs> and Shefflin missed the front end of the one and one, leaving the door ajar. Velk now gives it to Haley. Now here's Kobe Jones with a bevy of moves. Couldn't handle it properly, so they'll reset it. Jones turns up. Oh. Tipped out. Goaltend. Goaltend on 22, though. 
That should be basket interference on 22. Yes, offensive basket interference on Sabero. Yes, indeed, because he came from inside of the hoop. Right there. If I'm Mountain Brook, I may find me a guy to foul to kind of extend this game because if I'm not mistaken, uh, Grayson is probably, what, two for their last six from the free throw line? You are correct. Belt comes away with it. The Jones, who steps into a left wing three, in and out, rebounds Sabero. Jones fires away again, bottom. A three ball from Kobe Jones. He has a 30 ball. Five and point a timeout call. 59 to 54 with 236. You're absolutely right. A five point turnaround. This timeout brought to you by SUV TV. Join the SUV TV Parent Perks program today. Just email info at the SUV TV.com to enroll and complete a short survey in order to receive a free digital copy of your player's game, special discounts, and offers, and more. Email info at the SUV TV.com. Joe Hilsman, Yasir Rose, Rosemond, and Eric, Eric, Mark Edwards, <laughs> courtside in our SUV TV courtside seats. That's what happened. You're checking and getting information. Some good stuff just went down in Brunswick, Mr. Mark Edwards. Oh, boy. Here we go. Oh, I'm, I'm not repeating it on the air. Okay. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm going to have to get you on this broadcast etiquette. 59-54, <laughs> 232 to go. And Caleb Murphy now going to the free throw line. And you see, you were talking about it. Two of six for Grayson. He was one of his last four. And now sticks that one in good. Got to make them when they count. This game is far from over, guys. But when you continue to stand up there and knock free throws in, it helps. Lead push to seven. Two and a half to go. There is the shot clock, so no one will be sitting on the basketball, taking the air out of it. Jones on the nice look to Severo. Great pass, great ball movement. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Turnover by the Grayson Rams and Tenari Lane. They had an okay night tonight. And that's one of those possessions where they probably should have pulled it out and ran a little clock. But uh, he'll learn that as he gets old. He'll, he'll start understanding that. Because Ben Holland would be all over him right now. Probably would have substituted him. Jones missed it again. Passing back -back. the basketball and poor errors creating turnovers. Back-to-back -back turnovers. Seems like Grayson is trying to give this ball game to Mountain Brook. If, yeah. Mountain, if Mountain Brook could capitalize on some of these possessions, they maybe could get the lead. Leaving the door ajar for them continuously, even with less than two minutes to go. Haley drives and a foul call, and it will be on Josh Smith as Haley was on the attack. Not very good defense out front. Anytime you can get dribble penetration from the top of the key with no help, that means the defense is not very good. He went from half court. <laughs> he did. He did. I don't think they expected that. Oh. Haley free throw, no good. Now, he has missed this last three. He's two of five from the free throw line today. Courtman in. Josh Smith out for the Grayson Rams. Courtman number 11 in goal. 
has been very solid off of the bench today. He has three three-pointers and nine points. Second free throw, no good. Haley missed it, goes into the expensive seats. Good hustle, out of bounds. It'll be Grayson basketball. Inbound to Smith, to Murphy. Just pull the ball back out. Float it up, no, and Tenari Lane will go to the free throw line on the attack. Well, I'm not sure if I agree with that possession right there, especially when time is on your side and you have the lead, but he did attack the basket pretty hard and he got to the free throw line. Let's see if he can cash in on these free throws to extend the lead a little bit. Lane, first trip to the line today. Got the roll. So Tanari Lane will get one more. The lefty going to Winthrop. Puts them both in. He's got eight points on the day. Hands it to Colby Jones. Jones quickly down. Oh, Lane dunked it home. Get out wow. the way. Colby Jones just threw it down. Move. Who was that, Shefflin? Yes, here. You didn't tell me. You didn't tell us he had that. Kobe Jones just came down and just rocked that thing with you the right hand hammer. That. Well, that was a part of the analytics. <laughs> that was an analytic dunk. Finish at the wall. Move, Shefflin. You're going to wind up on a poster. Okay. Wind up on a fathead. Now, how does that guy get out of Alabama? Jonas Hayes and those guys at Xavier did a good job Jones of finding him one down there. What does that give him on the night? 30, 35? 30, uh, 30, uh, no, 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 32. 32 on the night. 63 to 58. Five-point game. Mm. Five-point game with the shot clock in high school, boys. Let's see what we got Three here. Exactly. Three-possession game right now. Here's oh. Haley. Spins it over. On the attack, Reed up, no, follow belt, no, and rebound comes off to Murphy, and Murphy will come back this way and shoot free throws. Murphy has lived at the line in this fourth quarter. He has three of six from the free throw line in the quarter. Mountain Brook will probably shoot. But they'll be bad when they look at this film on tomorrow. They probably have missed 20 layups tonight, and I'm talking about of the point-blank variety. Alex Belt has fouled out of the contest. He fouls out with two points. Murphy at the free throw line. He's five of eight from the line on the day. Oh, living right. Got the roll. Six and nine. I think I like Murphy's hair. I wonder if I could get my hair like that. You can. Yeah, with a weave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jones. Spins it over. Three ball. Reed. Hill of the rim. Rebound. Davon Smith to Murphy. Murphy throws it up. Oh, good job by deflecting oh. it. Oh, my God. Is Davon okay? The Grayson bench wanted to really fly up, but they, they remained down. He's going to throw that alley-oop up to him, and the ball was deflected. Can we get a replay on that play? Davon, he is moving. He's face down. Maybe Davon just trying to get himself together. We'll take a look at the SCB TV instant replay. He got the rebound now, kept it in the middle, started the break. And you knew this was going to be showtime. The ball was deflected. Oh, the guy wow. pushed him out of the air. Oh, oh yeah, God. undercut by Thomas Reed. Mm. I'm glad we're inside in the gym because if we were outside on the blacktop, that would be a different outcome. That's not I'm, I'm glad they can't see the replay inside the gym. I think that should be an intentional and ejected, yeah. Yeah, Reed has been ejected from the basketball game. If they could see the replay, they'd they would understand. They would understand why. I mean, you just, you don't it do that. Even, it wasn't even close to being a basketball play. Yeah, non-basketball play at all. You can't box out a guy going for an, an alley -oop. Alley -oop. Even if the ball was the play. Coach Joffrey Pierce is upset. He really is upset, as, as he should be. Davon is moving. He's just face down. 
hard fall. Thomas Reed with the undercut on the alley-oop, which I, I, you, do, you don't do that in basketball. I don't care who you are, where you are. And be glad we're in a controlled environment. Reed has been ejected. And I think in Alabama it is one game you have to sit out once you're rejected. In Georgia, I know it is two games. So Davon Smith is down. He is moving. Coach Joffrey Pierce is still highly upset. He has a scowl on his face, one that he doesn't like, and that's something you've seen from these players a lot. Is that alley in the hoop, and Davon Smith now up on his feet. The training staff is here. And they'll have a week now of rest and to get him healed up, walking gingerly, almost on his own power. With 59 and 5, 10 seconds. 18 points so far on the night for Davon Smith. He's now walking fully on his own power. He's in some pain. He'll be sore. And the Grayson coaching staff and Grayson people are upset at Mountain Brook, which, I mean, you rightly so. As you take one more look at it, started the break. The alley, good job. The ball was deflected, but then he went and knocked him out of the air. Fell hard on his right shoulder and right arm. And right and face. Yeah, and the right, that right side. Get him some Epsom salt and let him soak up real good. Rub him down. Can you imagine if y'all see it would have felt like that? Woo. <laughs> I probably wouldn't be playing basketball no more. <laughs> Intentional foul and ejection. So now Caden McArthur will be shooting the free throws. Caden has not scored in the contest, the 5'10 sophomore. The lefty sticks the first one up and in good. One of my favorite little up-and-coming players. This kid played with uh, YRN this spring and summer, and um, it's a great kid. Got a lot of potential. Uh, next year when he takes over the reins of the point guard, I think um, he's going to show some special things. I like his shoes. 66 to 58. And now, and now Coach Pierce, he's still upset. He calls a full timeout and has a couple of choice words for the officials. And I don't think he's upset at the officials, but I would be upset if my star player was undercut. Wait a minute. So they only got, there wasn't a. It was an intentional and an ejection. Okay, so. So he didn't call a tech. He just ejected it. An intentional foul and an ejection. He didn't call a tech. You don't have to call a tech to eject someone in high school. Nugget. <laughs> Although you would think the proper call would be an eject, uh, would be an intentional, yeah. an automatic two text, and yeah. then the ejects. I've never seen that before, but hey. Grayson's coach is going to be even more upset when he gets home and sees this replay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's going to bring yes. it right back to him all over again. Yeah. He, he, might, he might call him or he might send a nice little email. <laughs> all right, 59 and 9, 10 seconds. It'll be Grayson basketball, baseline out of bounds. Ian Shefflin will be the trigger. Kick. We'll do it again. The clock is on Grayson's side, so hopefully they can get a good possession here. But I'm sure Mountain Brook will foul. So if they and can make free throws the rest of this game, they should be. And they have 29 on the shot clock. I would just no need to do that, Josh Smith. Offensive foul and the turnover, his fourth. Check it. The five has fouled out now. We got ourselves a ball game. These guys can score right here. And without Davon Smith handling the ball. Every foul, though, is going to be suspect the remainder of the day. Oh, no doubt. Because <laughs> Coach Joffrey Pierce is still upset. Still steaming. He is hot. You can see the smoke coming out. Yes. Of yeah, I mean, he is steaming. Colby Jones floats 
up, back iron, no, rebound, Cortman. Cortman breaks free and gives it over to Tanari Lane. Lane is going to come downhill. Flame put it up, tipped out of bounds. And Coach Pierce is telling Tanari, slow it down. Right now at this point, you might just want to get out of this ball game. Well, again, here's another possession. And, you know, just to go back to that um, possession where Davon got hurt, that's a play where you probably could have prevented that had you just wheeled it back out and used and burned a little bit of clock. Yeah, true. But I'm not going to knock them for coming down and throwing an alley-oop. No, I'm, I'm not going to do that because they're on a break, two-on-one break, and that's what they do. No doubt. No but you doubt. also have to look at the team you're playing against. you got kids that are they, scrappy. They're, scrappy. they're not really yes. athletic. So, you know, because I'm that, not saying I saw that play coming. I didn't but you either. you got to be careful. Who, you know. But then if that ball isn't tipped, Davon catches it, dunks it, and hangs on the rim. But it was tipped. It was tipped. You're correct. It was a tip pass, and then they could have went back the other way and got in transition and got a layup. And this is when senior, senior leadership should take over. Saying. I understand yeah. what you're saying. Senior leadership should take over at this part of the game, bring the ball back out, kill some clock. And get a good possession because they have to foul you. Yeah. They got to exactly. play catch-up game with you. On the drive, Bashinsky goes up, a blocking foul call, and Bashinsky – Bashinsky will go to the free throw line. Holt Bashinsky, 6'6 six, six and a senior, five points on the day. This will be his first trip to the free throw line. Mountain Brook staring down the barrel of their first loss of the season, coming in at 6 and 0. Oh. Hard fault contest, though. Hard fault contest. Free throw good. Pretty clean on both sides to that last play. It's a different thing when you play against uh, elite teams from the state of Georgia now. They, they, they got caught up with uh, McEachern last year, and they're feeling that grace and buzz saw this year. So all teams come from out of state. You better come in here correct. Well, I don't really have anything to say about that. I've been reading your tweets. I'm going to get more tweets tonight. So now I'm, now I'm going at the state of Alabama. I'm going at everybody that goes at Georgia. Georgia, we got something to say. The South got something to say. And We've I'm been building this for a long time. I've known you for, I've known you since 1995. So I've watched the progression of basketball in the state of Georgia since I moved here in 95 from when we used to be a run and shoot every day. Yeah. This was a football state. That gym really turned the corner, helped turn the corner with basketball, I feel like, in the state. Because you know what you started getting? You started getting kids on Saturdays that would come from southern Georgia, from Macon, from Milledgeville, from Albany, from all over, from Tiff County. They came from everywhere to play basketball and run and shoot on a Saturday. So the game started to really fall in love with it. And I used to see you back in the days, you would always be in the weight room lifting weights before you came and played. I did. Stretching. You did it the right way. I you know did. what I'm saying? I so tried. I, I, didn't, I hadn't seen that anywhere else other than really New York and California, where guys really took pride in their bodies and developing their games. So this is 20-plus years later. So watching these guys play, I got to support these kids. No doubt. No doubt. Run and shoot. Yeah, I was one of them ones. I used to come during the week, though. Oh, yeah. During I used the to week. come during the week. Oh, yeah. I used to come. We used to come during the week. We would go to, to, the, to the Ramsey Center. I used to play with Jonas and Jarvis, mm -hmm. but it was certain days – we was like, no, nah, it's this a run and shoot day. Go to the shoot. We would get out of school and come to run and shoot. Wow. And that was some great basketball. Oh, yeah. It was. Mm, you, yeah. learned, you, you, learned. You, you You played hard because you knew if you lost. It was a wrap. I got to get back on that list. It's going to be 45 minutes before I get back on the court. I might as well leave. And you yeah. actually played. I think yeah, a lot played. of times now these guys don't play a lot of pickup. They do a lot of individual skill work, which is good. Yeah, but you still you need, need that pickup pick element. But you need, you need pick that pickup element. element. Because with, with, you play without the whistle. Because without the whistle – there's not as many penalties. You know what I'm saying? If you if you get trapped in a corner here without the whistle, you know, after the game, your fellas going to talk to you. But in this this situation, you lose games. And then sometimes they, they'll say, oh, we play pickup at the gym. You're a closed gym, 13. You're not sitting there. You, you know, you sometimes just the old school pickup basketball is how you do it. I'm he not and Shefflin scores. I'm not a fan of the, clo the closed gym situations anymore. Yeah. I, I don't like that. Yeah. That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. Too advantageous to uh, other things sometimes. Grayson will run out the clock and get out of the ball game, and we hope that Davon Smith will be okay. The ball game is over. The Grayson Rams take home a 71 to 60 victory. They snap the six game winning streak of the Mountain Brook Spartans out of Alabama. Davon Smith with 18 points. Of course, we will check his health. Colby Jones finished with 32. 
for Mountain Brook. Pebble Brook and Burkmar coming up next to close out Holiday Hoops Giving exclusively on SUV TV. This SUV TV broadcast of Holiday Hoops Giving is brought to you by Adidas, Seven Group, Atlanta Hawks, Dribble Bridge, and CBA Sports.